a YouTuber may bring you to their grow light setup when it's full of luscious growth, but you'd probably like the information before you start your seeds. So currently I have zero plants in here that are for the 2023 gardening season. Everything you see here is basically just winter experiments. And at the end of the video, I'll show you what I got going on here. But before I do that, I just want to kind of show you my new setup for 2023 and how I'm going to utilize this small space to plant out a quarter acre garden. So let's start up with the basic setup I got here. I have two plastic racks put together. It's not a whole lot of space. The outside of my setup has this cheap dollar store shower curtain around it. And mainly, this is to keep the cats out, but it also helps to keep it really warm inside here. If I stick my hand in here, I can tell it's a lot warmer inside here than outside because this is a pretty cold basement I'm working with here. Last year I did all my seeds upstairs where it was like 72. So I'm kind of curious to see how they do in this cooler environment. But with this curtain around here and it being so warm, I think we're going to be just fine. We got the old Rule King shop lights in here. Two per rack. And this is something new I added. I got this top rack. Look at all this extra space I have to raise this up. So if my plants do get big, then go all the way to the ceiling. But I'm not going to let that happen. The grow light video, pretty popular. These are $25 just cheap shop lights. Got a lot of positive feedback there. Some people are already starting their seeds under cheap shop lights and they're doing pretty good. Which is to be expected because they definitely work. I got a new idea for this year because I'm sick of moving lights up and down, even though it's really easy with these chains here to move them up and down. If you get plants that grow at different rates, you're going to be bumping this back light up, the front light up. I've had these lights angled to compensate for certain plants. This year, we're running it different. So here is my system for this year. I have this bottom here that's just full of just random stuff. I got some of the cooking plates here with the, the clear lids on them, kind of like this here. This lid was on top of here to keep moisture in to help these germinate. And then just random pots and tie wraps, just some of my gardening supplies in here. The next tier up, this is going to be my germinating area. So I'm starting to experiment with some soil blocks right now. So I got a few inside here. Now this lid was on top of here, sitting under these lights just to keep the heat inside there and keep the moisture in there to help them germinate. But this row of lights right here is going to stay at about the same height it is now for every single seedling I start in here. And because I hate extra work and don't want to raise these up, I'm going to make level two my intermediate area. If you guys have been reading through the comments, I've been saying that this year, most of the stuff I'm starting inside is going to be mostly tomatoes and peppers. And I'm also going to try some artichokes. So I really don't need that much space inside here. I am going to start seeds for everything else, but I'm going to do it a different way. And I'm going to show you towards the end of the video how I'm going to do that. We're just looking to maximize space here. Back to the three tier system. So we get our plants growing. They start growing up. They start reaching for the light. Once they start doing that, I'm going to keep them in these same pans. I'm going to move them right up to here. Once they get up to here, the light does not have to be as close when they're like two or three inches tall. So this height right now is perfectly fine. I'm not going to pot these up. I'm going to put them right on this rack here. And once they start growing taller and start getting kind of close, kind of like this little apple tree is here, that's when they're going to come up here and get potted up. Maybe. And I say maybe because I am experimenting with soil blocking. It's something Jim Kovaleski does. He's one of my gardening heroes. Seems to work pretty good for him. So if we can get the soil blocks, the two inch blocks up here, and all the plants are doing fine, they're going to stay the way they are in trays up here and just keep growing without transplanting. But worst case scenario, just like last year, they're going into solo cups. And I'm going to change my solo cup design around a little bit. So we put the drainage holes in the bottom, but I notice it's really easy to overwater plants in solo cups. 
So I'm going to be putting holes all over the outsides of these things. So the roots, when they start forming in there, if they try to escape, they can air prune themselves. And it keeps a lot of moisture out. It's really easy to fix plants that are underwatered, but if you overwater plants, it's very hard to fix them. But it is possible. I've done videos on that, the overwater tomatoes that got a lot of views, saved all my tomato plants. I suggest you check that one out. I noticed there is a huge problem even now with people abusing their grow setups. Whether you're using one or two or a dozen grow racks, you have to plan ahead to how many plants you're actually going to plant. So check this out. This is a real big pet peeve of mine. I have a big problem where I don't like killing plants. I don't like thinning them out. Now let's say you have a set of lights down here on a grow rack and you got two inch cells or they make cells even smaller than this. And you're like, yeah, I could fit like 200 plants in here. Well, here's the problem with having 200 plants right here. As these plants grow, they're going to outgrow this and everyone's like, that's fine. I'll just pot up my plants. Well, a two inch cell potted up turns into a four inch cell or solo cups. And can I fit 200 solo cups up here? I highly doubt it. So I beg you, do not get greedy. The number of seeds you can start under your grow setup is going to be dictated by your final lighting setup. What's going to happen is if you start too many here, you're going to run out of space and you're going to end up adding more racks, more lights, and it's going to cost you more money. That's some seedling math right there. That might be the most important part of this whole video is don't start too many seedlings. Just go, go to your final tier you got here or all your grow space and calculate how many plants you can start from there. And that's how many you want to start down here. Some other stuff I got going on with my hillbilly setup right here. These jugs here and over here is all rainwater. I have my fertilizer dispenser right here. Got the spray bottle that's full of rainwater. Helps me keep my soil blocks nice and moist. And then over here, this is my homemade fertilizer. Just did a video on how to turn just about anything into fertilizer. You can see all the good stuff floating around the bottom there. This stuff smells terrible. But look at that. Just fills out super nice. Been giving it to the chives over here. They're absolutely loving it. And this little apple tree's been getting it too. So that's my seed starting system. But before I move on and show you all these different experiments I got going on here, I have to reiterate one more time about grow space. So a couple of people asked, how many lights do you put on each rack? My answer is two. I could fit three or possibly four in here, but that does me no good because I am controlled by the number of mature plants I can fit on my top rack here. So to keep things cheap, we're either using these smaller pots or solo cups, and it's looking like I need about four inches per solo cup. So if I fill this whole area, following the edge of the light down, because we don't want plants outside here and trying to lean in towards the light, they're not gonna be healthy. And I take those measurements, I could fit about 60 plants just on this top rack. Now, if you want to get ambitious, you could always start moving some of these up and moving plants around to different light heights. And you could probably double the amount of plants you get in here. But that's just too much work for me because of the alternate ways I'm going to grow some of my seedlings. Keep that in mind if you want to do it the lazy way with this three tier system here. So I'm limiting myself to 60 plants to start. And let's be realistic, 60 tomatoes or 60 peppers or a combination of both, that is a lot of plants. That's like $300 worth of transplants from Home Depot. So if I'm planting out a quarter acre, where am I going to grow all my seedlings? My answer right here, like I said, like Jim Kovaleski with the soil blocks, I got myself a nice soil blocker and 
There are so many different soil blacking recipes you can use to make these soil blacks and a lot of them they just crumble and they're no good. So I decided to try out my own recipe and it worked really good the first time. This is my soil blocker, the Ladbrook. This is one of the good ones here. Good seeds, nice and healthy coming up. We're going to see what happens. Using this soil blocking method, went out and bought these large clear totes with lids. And this is how I'm going to start a lot of my plants. I can fit 105 soil blocks in each one of these bins here, like brassicas, lettuce, pretty much anything that's not a pepper or a tomato that I'd want to start inside. I'm going to start them inside these with the lids on like a mini greenhouse on my back porch. And I know it's going to work pretty good because these cooking pans with the clear lid were like mini greenhouses. I did the same thing last year for all my fall crops. I just planted in seed cells inside these trays here with the lid on and just let them germinate on my back porch and then occasionally took the lid off. And then if it was going to rain big or something or be really windy, I put it back on. Since we know we don't need giant plants to transplant, it's actually unhealthy to transplant the giant plants. If we can get these plants in here in soil blocks to like three or four inches in height or even less, just like three or four sets of true leaves, I can plant these soil blocks just straight out into the garden like this. I put them right into the dirt and cover them up. Find that with all the direct sowing I do in my garden, like last year, all my kales and lettuce, I just direct sowed them. They did really good. That's going to allow me to plant out a quarter acre garden and not have to worry too much about starting a lot of plants inside. And as far as watering, two of these are going to be for raising plants. And they're going to have holes in the bottom. And then my third one is going to be a water bin that I'll fill with rainwater. And what's going to happen is I'll have all these soil blocks in here. And if I need to water them, I just dip it down inside this one and bottom water up. Which is the healthiest way to water your seedlings, by the way. So I am really excited about this. Moving on to my winter experiments. Got some nice green beans going on here that my kid planted in little pots and we transplanted them in here they're planted very thick inside here i think there's like four of them in here so i didn't want the leaves touching the soil so we shredded up some cardboard which is a great way to recycle cardboard makes a great mulch we're gonna be doing that a lot in the garden this year Get little flower buds all over the place so pretty soon these beans are going to start flowering, and I think we're going to get some beans out of them, even though they're planted pretty tight. Beans are something that if you're a plant killer, you can probably grow beans. Like, you just plant these things and forget to water them, and they do great. Like, they seem to not like water at all. Like, this soil, this soil is pretty dry in here. I barely give them any water. And if I do, then they start to look sad. Huge fan of beans, such a great crop. I'm going to come up here to my apple trees I sprouted from some store-bought organic honey crisp apple trees. Just did a video on that. I think I don't need to reiterate that these will not grow into honey crisp apple trees, but they could make some new version of an apple tree, which would be pretty cool. And just planting trees is great anyway. So if I can get these things ready to go outside after danger of frost has passed, put them out there, let them grow, that's a good thing. Winter experimenting because it's too early to start seeds. Coming over here, we have the milk jug cut in half with some chives coming in, doing pretty good. Chives are probably one of the ugliest plants when they come up, how they grow. Like they're just like grass. Then over here, we got even more chives coming in. The idea here is we let these chives thrive inside this plastic container. And when it's time to plant out, we're going to break up these clumps and put them out in the garden. Today I just took some hardwood mulberry cuttings. I got one mulberry tree on my property that they planted in a shady location, so it's not doing too great. 
about 25 years or so, when I was a young kid at home, we had mulberry trees growing all over. And they were kind of a nuisance because they just dropped mulberries all over the place. And they tasted pretty good, but I really didn't appreciate them that much. But now that I got my own mulberry tree here and it's not doing that great, I figure I'll take some hardwood cuttings, see if I can get them to root, and maybe I'll start planting more mulberry trees in a space where they can actually thrive. See how these guys do in here. With the hardwood, it's probably better to put them in soil, and that's probably where they're going to end up. They're dormant right now. And I'm going to take a lot of cuttings from different plants like the Rosa Sharon, hibiscus, and the willow trees I got and just kind of go around my property and see what trees I like because a lot of them are dying and just take branches like this even when they wake up and just stick them in the ground and see if they'll grow. I'm going to try to regenerate the forest in a spot that doesn't shade out my garden so stay tuned for that video. That's basically it for my grow system I got inside with the germination, the intermediate, and the finishing area. I didn't want to wait until I had a whole rack of seedlings. I know it would look really good in a video to have all this filled out with plants growing, probably get more views. But a lot of people are searching for this information right now. So I figured I'd bring this information now so you can plan ahead. Zone 5B, you have at least a couple weeks before you start planting your tomatoes or even peppers. End of March, first couple weeks in April. If you already started these plants, good news is you can top them off and they'll send out side shoots. If you don't want to deal with giant plants inside if you planted early, that's a good option. I suggest looking up how to do that. You guys may have seen me comment on a lot of the Michigan Facebook gardening pages from my personal profile. I probably comment a little too much on there, but it seems like every year the same questions arise about starting seeds indoors and a lot of it has the same problems. Big ones are seeds too early and too many starts. There's a lot of bad information on Facebook. YouTube's actually pretty decent when it comes to information. I'm trying to get this info out before people make the mistakes. Check out my seed starting mistakes video and my seed planting calendar video. That's gonna help you plant your seeds at the right time and it's gonna help you beat some of the mistakes that ruin people's seasons. And I really am appreciative of the fact that I started a YouTube channel and I didn't have to go with a niche like you're supposed to where we do one thing on the channel. Like my channel's got all kinds of stuff on it. Like we got growing information, we got crafts, like the birdhouse I did, fertilizer, permaculture, organic gardening, rabid raccoon attacks, and if a paper bag can fend off bees, wasps, and hornets, chicken wire fences. It's like kind of just a bunch of random homesteading stuff on here. You guys, you can take all this weird stuff I'm doing here on two and a half acres in Michigan and apply it to your small yards wherever you live. Pretty much the local rules are the only thing slowing you down, but you can fight those to an extent. That's why I'm so glad I moved out of an HOA. That is my three-tier grow rack system, the hillbilly gardening setup here in the cold basement. I hope some of this information helped you guys out, gave you some different ideas. Don't be afraid to experiment, especially during the winter time when you're not growing anything. Don't start your seeds early. Don't plant too many. And as always, thanks for watching.